And, and why did you get it? Why? You... why? Uh, so he just needed a new home. Um, facilities, usually they can't keep every single little baby that's born there. So he was sent to us to be an educational animal. So he's going to help teach kids in schools and things like that, all about native species, which is pretty cool. Uh, and he, he will be happy here. <laughs> he's going to have a nice enclosure outside. And he actually just had his first meal of meat today. It was his first time ever having meat, which is pretty exciting. And he likes me. <laughs> no, he's full. <laughs> So this little guy, his name is Vito, and he is a month and two week old baby Canadian lynx kitten. Uh, so these guys are native to Northern Ontario here, and he's gonna grow up to be really, really big, probably over 50 pounds, uh, and at three feet tall at his head, which is pretty cool. And he's already got really big paws. So these guys are made for the snow, so they have huge paws so that they can actually walk on it more comfortably, and they won't slip through ice or anything like that, because it distributes their weight a little bit better. And you guys can also see it has little ear tufts here. And that's a characteristic of a Canadian lynx is they have these really long black ear tufts on their little ears. And, and why did you get it? Why? Uh, so he just needed a new home. Um, facilities, usually they can't keep every single little baby that's born there. So he was sent to us to be an educational animal. So he's going to help teach kids in schools and things like that all about native species, which is pretty cool. Uh, and he, he will be happy here. <laughs> He's gonna have a nice enclosure outside. And he actually just had his first meal of meat today. It was his first time ever having meat, which is pretty exciting. And he likes me. <laughs> so rehabilitation animals, we basically say uh, the minimal handling possible. So basically they just get fed and they get put back in their cage. Uh, unless there is a different species. So there are some exceptions. Uh, beavers are an exception to that rule. Uh, baby beavers actually have to be handled and loved, uh, but only by one person. So in that case, it's a bit of an exception. Most baby animals, we don't snuggle them. We can't talk to them very much because they'll adjust to our voices. So we just feed them quietly and we put them away. And then we make sure that they're living with others of their species to make sure that they don't like people and they understand that's their species. And as long as they grow up nice and healthy, then they get released. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this little guy here, his name is Alan, and Alan is actually a groundhog. So he is the largest member of the squirrel family, which is pretty cool. He's related to all the squirrels you guys see outside here, pretty much everywhere. Uh, so Alan was actually brought here because somebody was keeping him illegally as a pet, which is pretty sad. Uh, it is actually illegal in Ontario to have any native species in your care for anything over 24 hours. You can get charged and you can actually go to jail for it. Uh, but unfortunately, Alan, he was a victim of somebody trying to keep him in their house like a little hamster. And he obviously likes people. That's why he's so comfortable with us. Uh, so when he was confiscated, they, we, uh, they were contacting us and we got him here as an educational animal so that people can learn about groundhogs and they can learn why you shouldn't have one as a pet. <laughs> and he's a big fan of corn. And then he has these little biscuits in here called monkey chow. And uh, those are probably his other favorite food. <laughs> He really likes pecans, which are the most expensive thing he could like, unfortunately. But corn's not too bad. <laughs> and then these guys, since they are a rodent, uh, their teeth actually grow up to a couple decimal, uh, decimals of a millimeter every single week, which is pretty crazy. Uh, it means their teeth are constantly getting longer and longer. So he has all of these branches in here so he can chew on them to grind his teeth down. And the monkey chow is really hard. That also helps with that situation, which is nice. Make sure he never gets his teeth too long. 
Uh, so an animal that had those two sets of teeth actually misaligned, they can actually grow right through their soft palate into their brain, which is pretty sad. Uh, so that's why we have to give him all these nice things to chew on, <laughs> or else that would happen. Oh, he doesn't want the corn anymore. This is baby Chewy. <laughs> so he is a baby porcupine, and he was actually born on May the 4th, so we named him Chewy after Chewbacca, which is pretty cute. You want some food? So he kind of likes some hard food, but he's still mostly on his mom's milk. And his mom is right behind us over there, mm -hmm. and her name is Minnie. <laughs> ah, okay. There she is. You guys can see she's got all of her quills there. Mm -hmm. She says there's her baby. Uh, so porcupines actually have about 33,000 quills on their body. And our porcupines, they've got every single one of them. <laughs> uh, but a lot of people think they can actually shoot their quills, which they're not actually capable of doing. They actually would have to make contact with them to be able to make those quills leave their body. So porcupines also, their, uh, their quills are just a modified hair, which is pretty cool. So you guys can see when she shakes, there's quills all over the ground afterwards, and that's because they're just coming out like if you brushed your hair, which is pretty cool. Uh, they're, all they are is just a different kind of hair, basically. And not a lot of people know, but their quills actually have little barbs on the end of them. And if they go into skin or clothing, anything really, the barb will actually hook on, and then you can't pull them out very easily. You have to pretty much rip them out, which isn't very pleasant. <laughs> Uh, so a lot of people say that a porcupine attacked their dog, but your dog actually had to have attacked the porcupine because they're really peaceful. They don't want to quill anything. They just want to mind their business and live up in the trees in the wild. They actually don't really come down for much. Usually in the wild, they would just be up in the trees, which is pretty cool. Uh, most people have never seen a porcupine in the wild because no one goes for a walk and looks upwards the whole time. Everyone looks straight ahead or they look at the ground. <laughs> She's talking to him a little. <laughs> Hi, you two. All right. If you guys want to come on in, you can go for it. Hi. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. <laughs> she says she hears something. She's still purring, too. So you guys can actually see her neck shaking from how loud she purrs. It's pretty funny to watch. She's just not allowed to jump onto people. <laughs> right? Which is pretty cool. <laughs> she says she hears something. 